And we are live. Welcome to the NBA Strategy Show, Sunday, April 7th. I am Josh Engelman here to break down a nine-game NBA slate. We've got a massive one on our hands to close out this week or to start the week, depending on how you look at it. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow us all on Twitter, including me, at Josh Engelman. We're going off really early today. I am not expecting a raucous chat. I don't even know if I'll get chat, but that's okay. We could break this bad boy down very easily. We're brought to you by Prize Picks. Fantastic site to talk about. Let's do that right now. Prize Picks. Got to get the old uh got to get the old banner up on the screen. For some reason I don't have that right now. Let's let let's let you guys see it. And boom, there it is. Prize picks banner, $100 first deposit match bonus, as long as you click the link in the description below. Well, we got a little bit to talk about. So we've got five games that tip off at 6 o'clock, another two at 7, then one at 7.30, then we got another one at 8.30. We actually have games before 6 and after 8.30. This is a huge NBA day coming down the home stretch, only a week to go, but we're here now breaking down nine games and that is exactly what we're going to do so for the five of you that are in attendance right now not knowing that this show is about to start what's up starting early let's get it done portland trailblazers 16 point underdogs in boston and we have a 216 total on this one this is this is a rough spot for old portland not a good one and Portland is consistently without a large swath of people. Once again, Jeremy Grant is doubtful. Uh, no Matisse Thibel, no Anthony Simons, no Kamara. All those guys that have been out are out. And I don't really see much that I want to go crazy for here for Portland. They obviously have a terrible matchup. Uh, slow pace Boston team. Incredible defense. None of this looks good for Portland. And you can tell by my individual ranks. The only guy that I think is even mildly viable, maybe not only guy, but you've got Ryan Rupert playing somewhere around 30 minutes every night. He's shooting guard, small forward eligible, $3,800. He's a terrible per minute guy, 0.58 over the past month. I projected a little bit better than that, but if you're looking for a pay down option, he's on the list. He ranks 18th for me. I assume by the time we get to 6 p.m., we'll have way better value than Ryan Rupert. If you want to go to Scoot, I can see it. He's 7K. He has the opportunity to step into a much bigger uh, minutes load. I just don't know how often that happens. Tends to get himself in some foul trouble from time to time. Paul McCarthy in chat. What's going on, man? Thanks for being here. So I don't have a lot to say about Portland. I also don't think that that's going to be terribly controversial. This matchup is rough. Portland barely crossing over 100 implied total. This is just not the game that we're looking for if we're trying to pick up a bunch of really good DFS plays. Boston's basically the same that they always are. It just sort of depends who's in. Jalen Brown is questionable with the left hand sprain. Uh, Tatum is questionable with a right knee contusion. And uh, Jaden Springer is also questionable. That one uh, a little bit less important. But, you know, if Brown is out, that changes everything. If Tatum is out, that changes everything. If they're both out, it really changes everything. But if everybody is in, I actually like Jalen Brown the most. He's 7,800. He's shooting guard small forward. Ranks 24th for me. Going to be in that 1.15 to 1.2 fantasy point per minute range. Just shy of 30% usage. If they're at full strength, I think Brown's the guy that I want. Just because... I think the price is the most manageable and you're getting the best positional designation. You're getting him in shooting guard, small forward, guard, forward, utility. That sort of flexibility is always going to be a bit of a benefit. I actually think Chris Stapp's Porzingis would be my second guy here. But again, there are no priorities for Boston unless we lose one of Brown or Tatum or both. Uh, 7,700 for Porzingis. He's got the power forward center eligibility. Somewhere around 1.3 fantasy points per minute, 25% usage, north of a 10% assist rate, north of a 10% rebounding rate. 
and nobody on the Portland team that is capable of dealing with him. Sorry, DeAndre Ayton. I don't mean to – don't want to do that to you. Mm. I have just about all of my coffee left to drink, which is glorious. N desperately needed today. Come, coming off of a truly horrific uh, WrestleMania Saturday. Now we're heading into today. Right here, Liverpool taking on Manchester United. Massive, massive match. Didn't work out for us last time that we played them. Um, needed to work out here. We win. We stay in the top. So that's what I need. And then we've got uh, WrestleMania Sunday tonight. Big sporting day. Big sporting day. All right, let's get into game number two. It's going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are eight-point favorites in Charlotte. It's a 216 total. Now, the Thunder have been a real chore as of late. Uh, Shea is once again out here. Gordon Hayward is questionable. Isaiah Joe is probable. Jalen Williams is questionable. So we have to project Jalen Williams as if he's in. What the starting lineup ends up being, we don't totally know. Probably Case and Wallace in the SGA spot. Doesn't have to be. Could be Joe. It could go a lot of different directions. But if Jalen Williams is able to play, and he's not met with any sort of restrictions, I gave him 32 minutes. He's pretty clearly the best guy you can get to from Oklahoma City. Charlotte's terrible. They're the worst team in net rating. They're 29th in offense. They're 29th in defense. Now, they're slow. They do not play fast at all, which is smart if you want to try to win games. I don't know what they would be caring about that for, but if Jalen Williams at 7,300 is there, he's a top 10 play for me. He ranks eighth, and he's just a completely different dude when SGA isn't going to be on the floor with him. 29% usage, 28% assist rate. I have him around 1.25 fantasy points per minute. I have him projected for about 41 fantasy points. At this rate, at... With that position, you know, you like you you hope that he had a different position, but he he is kind of he's not like he should be small forward power forward if we're being honest. But I, I think he looks like a fantastic option if he's able to play. We just need to know if he's limited. Even in thirty minutes, he would still be a solid option. Thirty two, you're really happy to get there. I'm also happy to get to Lou Dort. You know, he's a point seven two guy, but certainly you anticipate. Anybody playing Charlotte is going to feel a little bit better than their average. I think everybody would, would agree with that. So you've got Dort here with still no SGA, 4,600, small forward only. I got him at 0.8. So I went from 0.72 to 0.8. I think that's reasonable. 18% usage. It's not a lot, but you're getting the hardest position to fill at a value-ish price tag in a fantastic matchup, at least defensively. And I think that's all you could really hope for. Chet's fine at 7,100, but I do think that he's very clearly behind Jalen Williams and a little bit behind Lou Dort. Maybe whoever ends up being the fifth starter could be a little bit interesting. You could change, change the minutes allocation around a little bit. I think the most likely scenario here is, is that we don't find much of OKC to be appealing other than Jalen Williams if he's in. Now, if Jalen Williams is out, We'll probably squeeze out a little bit more value. You're taking off close to 30% usage. You're filling in another 30 minutes. But we've seen what they've been doing, you know, over the past few games with both of those guys out. So we know how to account for that. Charlotte side is pretty easy to talk about. I mean, Nick Richards is questionable. He has been a bit of a chore lately. Uh, he's missed the past three games. So if he's back, everything looks a little bit different. But Charlotte gets to face, obviously, a good defense in OKC, but they also face a faster team. So they do get a little bit of a pace-up matchup. And I want to go to Miles Bridges. He's 7,800, small forward, power forward eligible. I have him ranked 11th. He's going to be in that, like, 1 to 1.05-ish range fantasy points per minute. But he plays massive minutes, 38, 39, 40, basically every single day. It's great positionality. He's 25% usage, dude, 15% assist rate. I would like say, I don't want to say like priority because that might be a little too aggressive, but high, high end play for today at that price tag. You know, the minutes aren't going anywhere. 
I like him more if Nick Richards is out. And that's just because when they can play anybody else at the five, really, of that's left on this team. But when Grant Williams is predominantly getting the minutes at the five, Charlotte can go five out. And at that point, you really start to open up the floor offensively. Like, they're not a good offense. But if you can spread the floor more, it just makes everything easier for everybody else. So I really like Bridges more if we get Nick Richards out. I kind of like a lot of Charlotte. No, no individual guy other than Bridges. Like Brandon Miller has been playing pretty well. 7,100 shooting guard, small forward eligible. Somewhere around that fantasy point per minute mark. Happy to go to him as well. I just think Bridges looks a little bit better. And you could talk yourself into Trey Mann. You could talk yourself into Nick Richards if he plays. You could talk yourself into Grant Williams, certainly if Nick Richards doesn't play. So there are pieces to like from Charlotte. But Miles Bridges is the priority. Like I said, currently ranking 11th for me. A Miles Bridges Jalen Williams combo in this game. Certainly like that little stack if you want to go that direction. Mm. Glorious. All right, let's go to Chicago now. This is a pretty easy one to talk about. Bulls Magic. This is a 210 total. This is the lowest total on today's slate. Right away, you should know. Doesn't it, you don't expect things to look good here? Chicago is a seven and a half point dog in Orlando. Bulls have a Q tag on Kobe White, who left their last game early. Q tag on Alex Caruso. We have to assume everybody is in for right now, and if that's the case, you're not playing anybody from Chicago. I think Kobe White looks all right for sixty nine hundred. If you think he can play his normal run, don't feel confident about that. But he ranks sixty sixth for me to put everything in perspective. Now, if you get Caruso out and White out, then you start finding some value and you start bumping up some of these other guys. But you need to have that news first and foremost. Like, Dasunmu will look a little bit better if you can get White out. Someone is going to step into a role if one or both of those guys are out and grab a bunch of extra minutes, whether that's Javante Green or Javon Carter or Dalen Terry. Like, someone has to step into a bigger chunk of minutes. We probably don't look at Chicago all that much unless you get Caruso and White out. But if everybody's in, run away from this team. Magic are second in defensive rating. They're 25th in pace. Chicago's 26th. This is about as slow of a matchup as you could really put together. I don't anticipate getting to anything from Chicago unless you get both guys out. Now, for Orlando, a little bit different. Um... Because they do get to face a much worse defense in the Chicago Bulls. But at the same time, everybody for Orlando that normally plays is already in. So you've got Franz Wagner, who has just not been playing well lately. At 6,500, you do fill a tough position. But 0.94 fantasy points per minute over the past month. I project him more than that because I think he's on a downswing. And these are the times you want to get to someone like him. But it really hasn't been fun. I think John Isaac's a reasonable value play if he's going to play around 20 minutes. I think Wendell Carter Jr. is a reasonable play at center at 5,200. He's going to play about 26 minutes. Like, I have Franz ranked 17th. I have Isaac ranked 23rd. I have Wendell Carter Jr. ranked 32nd. Remember what I said what was the best ranking for Kobe White? That was in the 60s. Bancaro in the 40s. Cole Anthony in the 40s. Jalen Suggs in the 40s. Like, most of Orlando ranks ahead of the best Chicago guy. But nobody from Orlando is just run like a runaway awesome play. I'm probably higher on Franz than most, and I'm okay with that. That's the kind of guy I want to take a stand on because I think he's incredibly talented. And I think this is just a downswing, and you can get the benefit of a low price. But even in this matchup, a 109 implied total for Orlando is you know average at best. There are much better games to talk about. Now, before we move further, because we're already through three games of the nine that we have on today's slate, I want you guys to hit that like button if you haven't done it yet. I want you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. All of those things are incredibly helpful to me. I want you to sign up at Stochastic. Uh, depending on which sport you're trying to play, we have whatever you're looking for. While the NBA regular season is ending, the playoffs are going to be here for a while. Don't forget, NBA runs through the middle of June. All, like... Once we finish this week of garbage basketball, 
The first round of the playoffs has really nice NBA slates, generally speaking. You get three or four games on a, a decent chunk of days. NBA showdown starts to become a much more popular scenario. We've got everything you could want on the NBA side. Maybe you want to transition to baseball. MLB DFS is here. I love MLB at DFS, no matter how hard it is. Uh, it is my perf- it's my favorite D- it's my second favorite DFS sport. MMA is the best because it's the it's the most fun to watch and sweat. Um, MLB is my favorite DFS sport in general. It's my most profitable DFS sport over the course of the entire time that I've ever been playing MLB DFS back to 2014. Um, and we have everything there: Sims, projections, ownership, our top stacks tool, our top pitchers tool, our top batters tool, the lineup generator. All of these things come with premium Discord as well. You can sign up for any stochastic package you're looking for using the links in the description of this video. Just click the link, sign up, whether that's a weekly pack package, a monthly package, either way, we have something for you. There's we're we're crossing the entire tier of, of price. You can get in for you know, around 10 bucks, you can get a Sims package that's a couple hundred a month. There's something for you here. And I think you guys should come check us out because we cover everything on the DFS side. Links below. Infinite, good morning. Just saw that message now. Thanks for being here. The New Orleans Pelicans are six and a half point underdogs in Phoenix. 222 total. Now, New Orleans, Q tag, Jose Alvarado, Q tag, Najee Marshall, Q tag, Zion Williamson. And while Brandon Ingram is out, he has been cleared to start uh, ramping up. I know he's going to miss the next couple of games, but they're slowly but surely getting Brandon Ingram back. There's not much here that I want to get to from the Pels if everybody's in. The more we start cutting out these guys, or if we lose Zion, then we can start having real conversations about someone like Joe Val at 5,500. Because when Zion's off and Brandon Ingram's off, Joe Val ends up with like a 30%-ish usage rate. And even in what could be limited minutes, he still looks good. But if everybody's in, way different. Only guy I'd really want to get to is Zion. He's 8,700. He's power forward only. Ranks 30th for me, a 1.3 fantasy point per minute guy, 32% usage with no Ingram around, 33% assist rate. We're seeing CJ McCollum play 38 minutes a night, but he's up to 8,300 now, point guard only. A lot of the bloom is off the rose now that that price has come up. It's a decent matchup against Phoenix. They're an average defense, average pace team, but we need to know the status of Zion, Najee Marshall, and Alvarado. Alvarado's been out for a bit, but we're talking about like... 75 minutes, 70 to 75 minutes that are in flux here out of the 240 for the Pels. The only one that truly matters is Zion. Like if Najee Marshall is out, nobody cares. It changes nothing. If Jose Alvarado is out, nobody really cares. It changes nothing. If Zion is out, we find value in the Pelicans. Joseph Mata, good to see you. Of course, I'm I'm here every Sunday, man. I don't miss this stuff. I did go off an hour early, though. Liverpool kicks off at 10.30. If I would have started this show at 10 o'clock, I would have been watching Liverpool for the final 10 minutes. We don't need to do that. We'll just go early. Mm. Oh, by the way, schedule for the rest of the day, in case I haven't touched on it. Uh, MLB live before lock at 12.30 with Emac and Eric. So Eric and Eric in the afternoon. And then... Uh, Eric Lindquist back again at 5 p.m. to break down this slate for NBA Live Before Lock. So lots going on here on the stochastic streets, even on a Sunday, even on a day where Liverpool plays Manchester United and picks up a dub. Now we'll go to Phoenix. Not much to say for Phoenix. Uh, Everybody's healthy. Oh, God. Back is itchy. Can't stop scratching. All right. Bradley Beal, 6,600, point guard, shooting guard eligible. Pelican's defense is good for sure, but I think Bradley Beal is a little underpriced. I have him ranked 16th. He's a fantasy point per minute guy. He plays about 35 minutes a night. All it takes is a little hot shooting for him to be able to pay that $6,600 price tag off. 
Um, Bradley Beal would be the guy that I'm looking at. I've got Durant ranked 25th. I've got Nurkic ranked 34th. These guys are certainly in play. Like you're, you know, if you're you're playing a, a stack of entries, you're getting into like the 30th and 40th best guy into some lineups. So like you're working in Durant, you're working in Nurkic. I think Bradley Beal is the guy you want to prioritize of anybody here. Don't have a ton of interest in Devin Booker. I'm definitely getting to Durant before I get to Booker. Um, saving that extra $300, I think, is pretty important. AP, I don't have any ownership right now. I haven't run any Sims or anything to start the day. So all I'm breaking down right now are my raw projections. This is an old school show. It's an old school show for right now. But you'll you'll get all of that tonight on uh, NBA Live Before Lock. So yeah, Beal, Nurk, Durant, but again, Beal, 16th, that is the guy you want the most here coming out of Phoenix. Now we get to a real steaming bag. The Washington Wizards are four-point dogs in Toronto. We have a 229 total here. Now both of these teams have next-level dreadful everything. 26th ranked offense for Washington, 28th in defense. 24th ranked offense for Toronto, 25th in defense. And let's not forget, Toronto has a decent chunk of time in this season with Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes and OG Ananobi. Those guys aren't here right now. So whatever you think of 24th and 25th, that is not even showing you what they really are right now. So the Washington side, Q tag Rashawn Holmes, Q tag Kyle Kuzma. This is disgusting. Now, we need that information. But if everybody's in, I have Kuzma, Poole, and Denny Avdia all in my top 13. Corey Kispert is 20th. We have lots of good plays here. Kuzma leads the charge. He's a 1.2 guy in this spot. 8K, power forward, center eligible, 28% usage, 20% assist rate, north of a 10% rebounding rate. He's the first guy I want to get to. Poole's not far behind. He's going to take every shot possible against Toronto, and Toronto's not going to stop him. 7,500, point guard, shooting guard eligible for Poole. Ranks 12th for me, a 1.15 guy, 30% usage, 28% assist rate. I have both of those guys, Kuzma and Poole, projected for either 23 or 24 real points. That's no joke, because this spot is incredible. You want to get to these guys. Denny, 7,600. He's a 1.1 guy at a minimum, if not more. Let's not forget, the Wizards are the number one team in pace, and Toronto is 10th. Toronto gains so many possessions over their average by facing Washington here, it's really staggering, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. Even Kispert, only power forward eligible, which we need to be very clear here, is about as dumb as it gets. But 6K? Does he need to get up a lot of shots? Yeah. Does he have the opportunity to do that when Anthony Gill, Eugene Omeryuri, Jared Butler, Johnny Davis, Patrick Baldwin all have to play? Yeah. Kispert's going to get those threes up. I got him in for 19 real points. He's a 20% usage guy, somewhere north of 0.8 fantasy points per minute. All four of those guys, Kispert, Avdia, Poole, Kuzma, get him in your lineups. This game is a game you want to target because you don't always get Washington in competitive matchups. But here, both of these teams suck, and I think that's a benefit. Now, if we lose Kuzma or lose Holmes, we're going to create even more value for this team across the board. Maybe we start getting to Tristan Vucevic if uh, if Holmes happens to be out. Maybe we start getting to a Patrick Baldwin, an Anthony Gill, if we start losing these guys. Lots to like from Washington. We need the news, but even without it, they look awesome. Now, for Toronto, even with a giant increase in pace for the Raptors, we don't get much because of who's back. But Bruce Brown is questionable. Gary Trent is questionable. If both of those guys are out, we certainly change up the value equation for the Raptors. For now, if everybody's in, Kelly Olynyk would be my priority. He's 6,900. Now, he's center only, which is frustrating, but he does rank 15th for me overall. I've got him at a 1.2 fantasy point per minute rate in this matchup. 19% usage, a 25% assist rate, a 13% rebounding rate. He's in for a big time spot, and it could look even better if we lose Bruce Brown and or Gary Trent. 
I don't trust the minutes on Quickly or Barrett given their prices. Not guys that I want to try to get to. We might be able to squeeze out some value of someone like Grady Dick. If we lose Trent and or Brown, uh, we might be able to squeeze out more value of someone like Jalen McDaniels if those guys are out. Potentially O'Shea Akbaji if those guys are out. But if we're just looking generally, if everybody's in, it's Kelly Olynyk as the preferred option for Toronto. We move now to the New York Knicks. Three and a half point underdogs in Milwaukee. 220 total. Knicks season basically over at this point with no Julius Randle coming back. Q tag on Boyan Bogdanovich. We do have Ananobi back and not even on the injury report, but Ananobi being back kind of nerfs everything for the Knicks. The best I have anybody ranked is 36th for Jalen Brunson. Now, don't mind getting to Jalen Brunson. You build a chalky lineup, pivot off of a 9K guy to him, by all means. No problem with it at all. But he's not a priority. Neither is DiVincenzo or Hartenstein. They are the three best guys you can get to here. And an OB at 5,500, not really my cup of tea. I only have him in for 31 minutes. I think you need a little bit more playing time for him right now to really squeeze out value out of that price. Hasn't been a great per minute guy. Honestly, he's just still hurt. Uh, so there's not a lot to like here for the Knicks, even in a good matchup against a average-ish Milwaukee defense, a fast-ish Milwaukee team. Milwaukee's got the bad matchup. Good Knicks defense, dead last in pace. But I just don't think you're going to get to much of the Knicks. It's it's Brunson, it's Hartenstein, and DiVincenzo. But they're like five percenters today, 10 percenters at best. If you really like one, Grab a couple like highly positive ROI lineups with those guys. I'm not really squeezing much else out of the Knicks. Now, Milwaukee, Q tag Giannis, Q tag Pat Bev. I shouldn't need to tell you that the Q tag on Giannis plays a big role. If he happens to be out, we're probably going to be getting to Chris Middleton and Damian Lillard and likely to Bobby Portis. But if Giannis is in, if ever like if if Giannis is in, that means everybody's in. And if everybody's in, you're running away from Milwaukee. If everybody starts and plays for Milwaukee, the best I have anybody ranked is Giannis at 90th. You should not have a single share of the Bucks today if Giannis is in this game and Pat Bev. Because you could squeeze out some value on somebody random if Bev is out. I doubt you do, but you could. 90th. For Giannis, 1.6 fantasy points per minute, but they lose three possessions below their average just by facing the Knicks. And we're talking about a team that's pretty good defensively. Having OG and Anobi back certainly helps. So I don't know how you get to Milwaukee. Now you're going to juice the hell out of Damian Lillard and Chris Middleton if Giannis happens to be out. Bobby Portis is likely going to be playing about 30 minutes in that scenario. All of those guys look a lot different if Giannis doesn't play. Milwaukee, though, I assume. Desperately wants to win this matchup, so we'll see how hurt Giannis actually is. If we look at the playoff seedings, Milwaukee is 53% to be second seed, 24 to the third seed, 14 to the fourth seed, whereas the Knicks are 20, are, still have the opportunity to fall into the play-in. They're 15% for the six, 27 for the five, 27 for the four, 18 for the three. This is a massive game for seeding. So, you know, if Giannis can get out there, he's going to be out there. There's a lot of moving parts here for Milwaukee and the Knicks. But if Giannis is in, don't play New York. It's not worth it. All right. So that's another three games down. It's probably in our best interest to talk a little bit about prize picks. I know I touched on them out of the gate, but they are the sponsor of this show. You can get up to $100 on your first deposit when signing up using our links. I kind of want to tell you the next step of what you should do when you sign up at Prize Picks. And this works not just for Prize Picks, but for any other Pick'em site. I want you guys to use Odd Shopper as well. We talk about it a lot. We probably don't talk about it enough. And I know that probably sounds insane to people. But we're taking a market-based approach to beating the books. And it works. I don't know how else I could possibly say it. We tracked 40,000 recommended bets for the NBA this season. It returned a 4% ROI. I understand that that number probably doesn't seem like a big number, but that is any recommendation that we've put to an NBA bet. We track it like we have to have it. And based on that information, 
We've returned 4% ROI. You can sift through that a little bit more and increase those sorts of numbers. You're not getting 40,000 NBA bets down. It's a fantastic tool. So I've got it up on the betting side. Like we have a 30 odd shopper rating on Chris Paul under one and a half threes. 11% 11% expected value. We have massive value hanging out here on home run props for Nick Gordon, Brendan Donovan, Jazz Chisholm, all across fan gra- or all, all across FanDuel hanging good numbers. But we also do it for the Pick'em sites. So if I pull up the Pick'em sites here, DraftKings pick six, Logan Webb, strikeouts under five and a half, 67% win rate. You should get that into your pick six cards immediately if you can. Those lines aren't going to change either. That's just great value. If you're looking for something on the prize pick side, Scott McTominay under one and a half shots in the Liverpool Man U game that I've been talking about. 62% expected win rate, a 13% expected value. You could just start building out a card. Here's the cool way to do it. We have a fantasy optimizer for prize picks. So I click the fantasy optimizer and I can just say, let's grab Scott McTominay. I'm going to grab the next one. That's Ryan Rupert. Let's let's even go baseball. Let's make a, th- a three-sport card. We'll add Dakota Hudson. Now, that's a negative. Even with those positive EVs, they're the three best plays you can find. We're still a negative 2% EV because a three-pick prize picks card is like the worst thing you can do. So we actually want to add another good play to increase our value. Now, let's say I add this next one. Cam Thomas under PRA. We are now we have a four pick card, 10% expected value. Is it going to win a lot? No, it's going to win 11% of the time. But you're going to return 10% if you make this over and over again. Let's add a fifth play and really change up that expected value. Let's take the next best play. That's Zubots under 26 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. We're now up to 37% expected value and a 6% expected win rate. This is the type of card you want to play now. Massive return. Are you going to win constantly? No. 6% means you're going to win one out of every like 16 or 17 times. That sounds like not a lot. But the days that they hit, pay out everything because you're getting 10x your money. I could even add one more play, a Zion under and rebounds. We're up to 46% expected value. Now you're only going to hit this like once a month. But when you do, it pays out 25x. Maybe you hit two and you're playing with house money. We have this optimizer for every one of the pick'em sites, but I just did it for prize picks right now, the sponsor of this video. You can get Odd Shopper for 15 bucks for a week if you want to check it out. Or if you're on a sports betting side, you can do the exact same thing for the sports books. We have a parlay builder that does the exact same thing. I could add this Chris Paul play. I could add this Josh Hart play. And I already know I've got a 12% EV parlay right here via Odd Shopper. So sign up for whatever you want. Prize picks in the description, Odd Shopper in the description. I promise you guys, you're going to be happy you did it. Philadelphia 76ers are six and a half point favorites in San Antonio, 226 total. Now, Philly... Tough to talk about in this spot because they are on a back-to-back. Yesterday, we only got 23 minutes out of Embiid. I have no idea if they're going to play him on the back-to-back or not against San Antonio. I have him in for right now. They might not play him. If he's in, you're not playing anybody from Philly with any sort of gusto. Maxi's 8,800. That's going to be too much. For Tyrese Maxey today, I have him ranked 49th. Even in a great spot against San Antonio, 22nd in defensive rating, 5th in expected pace. I don't want to get here. Now, if we get Embiid out, then we can start having a conversation about Paul Reed. We can have a a little bit more of a conversation about Tyrese Maxey. You probably don't get to anything else from Philly, but you can look at Maxey and you could look at Reed. If Embiid is in, You could largely just ignore the Philadelphia 76ers. Hey, Paul Millsap, I have uh, no idea what you just said. None whatsoever. No clue. 
San Antonio Spurs. And to the hundred people that are here, thanks for hanging out on a Sunday morning. Butt crack of dawn, man. It's nice to see. So for the Spurs, they're missing some people. Keldon Johnson's probable. Chetty's out. Sohan out. Devin Vassell out. This is the first team where I'm like sounding the alarms in the biggest way possible. More so than Washington. I have Keldon Johnson is my number three play today. Victor Wembinyama is my number five play today. Malachi Branham is my number seven play today. And that says nothing for Trey Jones at 19, Julian Champagne at 27. But we got to start here at the top. Keldon Johnson's going to play 30 minutes with no Vassell around, no Sohan around. He's small forward, power forward eligible. He's like a 1.1 fantasy point per minute dude in this spot. 25% usage with those guys off the floor. 16% assist rate, 10% rebound rate. Keldon Johnson's one of the easiest plays to get to, and he's going to work all day. No matter what value we get, he's a mid-tier price that just fits. I probably don't have to explain why Wemby's awesome. 1.75 fantasy points per minute over the past month. He's playing 33 minutes a night. He's 11K. I got him at 1.8 for this game. 33% usage rate. Remember, no Sohan, no Vassell. Changes up the rates. 24% assist rate, 20% rebounding rate. This dude is nuts. And he's even more nuts lately. Like, he's just, he's become a dude. He's become a major dude. Like, even look at his assist rate. Look at what Wemby's been recently. You know, he was like a pretty normal, like, you know, 20% assist rate guy. Look at that ramp up in March. When some of these guys started leaving the floor, he's doing everything now. Rolling average of like a 30 plus percent assist rate. Yep. Give me, give me some of that for sure. You know, he's been all over the place usage. That's been ramping back up. What's the rebounding rate look like? Rebounding has been pretty steady. Block rate. He's still blocking 10% of shots that come in. It's nuts. And, you know, he's a league average efficiency guy. Get to Wemby today, guys. Don't be afraid to pay up for him, even against Embiid if he's in. And then Malachi Branham. He's just playing a lot of minutes because these guys are out. I got him in for 32. He's not a great per minute dude. Uh, 0.7 over the past month. I'll give him a little bit of a bump here. But I like that value, 4,300 point guard, shooting guard. And then if you want to get to Trey Jones, looks like a really good play. If you want to get to Julian Champagne, looks like a decent value play with great positional eligibility. But you need to prioritize Victor Wembanyama. You need to aggressively prioritize Keldon Johnson. And I feel like you should probably end up with quite a bit of Malachi Branham, even on a slate like this. Sacramento Kings, seven and a half point favorites in Brooklyn, 220 total. Kings are obviously without Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. And there are some pieces here that are okay. We have DeMontis Sabonis ranked 28th. I think it's hard to get to Sabonis if you can just pay $800 more for Wemby. I don't even think we're talking about comparable options here. Like, think about how good Sabonis is offensively. 1.42 fantasy points per minute. Victor Wembanyama is three-tenths of a point ahead of that. Now, I know that three-tenths of a point, you're probably thinking like, oh, that's not that big of an impact. Let's just say these guys play 30, 32 minutes. Three-tenths of a point is nine and a half fantasy points. That is a huge swing. So while I think Sabonis looks okay, you can't even comp him to Wem Wemby today. I think Trey Lyles is probably the guy you want to get to from Sacramento. The minutes have been creeping up a little bit. I have him in for 23. He's going to be around a 0.8 fantasy point per minute guy. But he's 3,800 and he's power forward center eligible. Now that we don't have Monk and Herter, these minutes are just there. And I like that flexibility and I like that potential value option here against Brooklyn. You can certainly work in Keegan Murray. You can certainly work in De'Aaron Fox, who's playing 37 minutes a night. Basically, any one of these starters are all right. You know, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of Barnes or Keon Ellis, 
It's Lyles at the top. It's Sabonis, who's fine, but a little murky. And it's probably Keegan Murray before I get to Fox, but positions matter more at that point. There's just not a, it's not a great anything. Brooklyn's slow. They're not, they're a bad defense, but they're not like the real bad defenses that exist at the bottom of the tiers. So when we hop over to Brooklyn, can't talk about them. Impossible right now. They're on a back to back. Uh, no Cam Johnson yesterday. The assumption is that he's going to be playing today on the back-to-back. Um, you know, they've kind of stabilized their rotation as of late. I like two things here for Brooklyn. I've got Mikel Bridges ranked 14th. Should be around a fantasy point per minute here against the Kings. He's 6,800. He's got the perfect positional eligibility, shooting guard and small forward. And then it's Nick Claxton. Somewhere around a 1.1 fantasy point per minute guy. He's 6,700. Shouldn't meet a ton of resistance defensively from Sabonis, but obviously Sabonis will be active on the boards. Both of those guys are basically top 20 plays. Claxton sneaks in at 21st, Bridges at 14th. But if you're getting to anything from Sacramento and Brooklyn, you're starting on the Brooklyn end. And you can get to Dennis Schroeder. You can get to Cam Thomas. Probably not a lot. It's Bridges and it's Claxton. Don't be afraid to run out the dual Bridges lineup today. That will certainly work, and they've got the positional flexibility to do it. But as I see it, it's clacks and it's bridges. And finally, we close this one out. Final game of the night. Utah Jazz, 11 and a half point dogs in Golden State, 227 total. Now, for the Jazz, no Jordan Clarkson, no John Collins, a Q tag on Chris Dunn, no Walker Kessler, no Laurie Markinen. I have Taylor Hendricks and Omer Yurtseven, both in my top 10. Hendricks, 4,700, power forward only. Going to play around 30 minutes, maybe more in a competitive matchup. Going to be in that like 0.85 to 0.9 range. Love getting to Hendricks. The price works. It's a low mid-tier play. That value is going to hold all day. Yurtsevin should see pretty sizable minutes. I went 27. He could play upwards of 30 if this game's working out for Yurtsevin. They don't have a lot of other options at center. They, I don't think they're very fond of Micah Potter. I got Yurtsevin as a top 10 guy. He's a fantasy point per minute. He just needs to be out there. But we're talking about two top 10 guys in Hendricks and o- Omer Yurtsevin for me. Now, you can get to Bryce Sensabaugh at small forward because the position's hard to fill. Colin Sexton is certainly worth a GPP flyer. But if you're prioritizing anything coming from the Utah Jazz in this matchup against Golden State, it's Taylor Hendricks and it's Omer Yurtsevin. David, every team in the league wants to give up that package for Mikel Bridges. I would too. Three months ago, at least. Probably still now, depending on how many picks. But if I'm trying to win a title, I'm going to have a much better chance of doing it with Mikel Bridges than I am with Jalen Green. Not that I don't like Jalen Green. Final team to talk about, the Golden State Warriors. No Steph Curry today. Out for rest. Kaminga, questionable. Wiggins, questionable. We have no idea what we're doing here, but I can tell you this. Dead last defensive rating for the Utah Jazz. They're seventh in pace, which is leading us to the number one play of the day. It's Chris Paul. He's going to play 30 minutes. He's 5,200. This could look even better if we get Kaminga out or Wiggins out. I went 30 minutes at 5,200. 1.1 fantasy points per minute for Chris Paul. 18% usage. A 35% assist rate. The clear number one option on today's slate is CP3. You got to get there with no Steph. You also need to get to who I have is the number two play today. Clay Thompson. 30 minutes at a minimum, 5,800 shooting guard only, second overall. Or if Kaminga's in, fourth overall, 6,700 power forward eligible, 1.25 fantasy points per minute. Both Kaminga and Clay with Steph off and these guys available. 
have 29% usage rates. We're talking massive scoring for both of these guys. When you're taking off the usage of Steph and the shots that Steph takes, somebody's got to pick that up. And the people that do that are Kaminga and Clay. Now, we might not have Kaminga. Maybe Kaminga's out and Wiggins is in. At that point, juice up Andrew Wiggins, who's going to have a much bigger usage rate. Even Wiggins with those guys in still ranks 33rd. Very reasonable to get to. But Golden State has three of the five best plays on today's slate as long as Jonathan Kaminga plays, and they have at least two. It's an amazing spot for the Golden State Warriors. Absolutely amazing. Chris Paul and Clay Thompson, those names aren't going to change. They're top five plays on this slate, no matter what news we get. Kaminga should be if he's in, but you can feel better about Paul and better about Clay if Kaminga's out. And the moment he leaves, Andrew Wiggins becomes a much different play, probably a little bit north of a fantasy point per minute, locking him in for 30 minutes. And then we start thinking about Kavon Looney at 3,200, maybe getting more run. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis probably looks a little bit better if we lose Kaminga here. Uh, Moses Moody might squeeze out a little bit of value. Gary Payton might squeeze out a little bit of value because Utah is so bad. Every little bit of those minutes matters. But that's nine games up, nine games down, guys. We have broken down this entire slate for today. Now, don't forget, NBA Live before lock later tonight at 5 o'clock so that they can take you all the way up until 6 and lock. You don't want to miss that. They'll have all of the updated news. Every single bit of the injury report that's coming out will be there for you. But this is a fun one. Don't forget, we got baseball coming up live before lock, I believe, at 1230. So we've, we've got a full baseball slate, 100K up top on DraftKings. So don't miss that. Plenty of different pick em slates that you can get to, for sure. There's a lot going on on this lovely Sunday. But the most important thing will be Liverpool absolutely destroying Manchester United at 10.30 a.m. Guys, that's all I got here. Thank you for being here. It's been fun. Thank you for waking up with me on this Sunday. Hit that like button on your way out the door. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Guys, this was the NBA Strategy Show.